and welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. There was a very unusual warning or announcement rather made by the European Central Bank this week. If you have any money in a bank, and most of us do of course, this isn't really something we want to hear. Without any fear mongering, I would say it is wise to take this message very, very seriously. This is a legitimate cause for a concern. So the European Central Bank reportedly asked certain banks within its system to monitor activity on social media in order to detect early signs of bank runs. This is truly unprecedented as the European Central Bank essentially admits to having major concerns about its liquidity and it's very worried that social media may increase the risk exponentially. I'm reading here from the European Central Bank site. The article is titled Financial Stability Considerations Arising from the Digitalization of Financial Services. The digitalization of financial services brings a variety of benefits, but could also amplify and accelerate the materialization of financial stability risks, it says. Authorities' attention was drawn to episodes of extreme volatility in the prices of meme stocks in the first half of 2021. You may remember this GameStop shorting back in 2021 made hedge funds lose millions of dollars. They were shocked, everyone was shocked, while a group of retail investors coordinated buying and selling. But that is trading, and that is very much in line with the general nature of trading. Applying this as precedent to long-term bank deposits may be a bit of a stretch. The banking sector's stress in the United States in March of 2023 reignited concerns around the impact of digitalization on financial stability as the interaction of increased online banking and social media may accelerate the pace of bank runs. And then the ECB concluded, Regulators and supervisors should consider the issue of how digitalization could accelerate the pace of deposit withdrawals in a structural way during periods of stress. So the question is here, are they actually expecting a period of stress in 2024? Finally, how social media activities relate to financial stability concerns and how the analysis of such activities can be used to monitor risks requires further investigation. So the European Central Bank is effectively telling us of its plans to ensure that social media coverage does not ignite a bank run. What needs to be done to make sure that this goal is accomplished? That's right, it is a scary word, but more likely than not, social media posts related to banking will be monitored and quite possibly, this is a scary word, censored so as not to cause panic. I will remind you that censorship was the big topic at the WEF in Davos a couple of weeks ago. For example, here is Ursula von der Leyen and one of our favorite people, Klaus, sharing their thoughts. Watch. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate, it is disinformation and misinformation, followed closely by polarization within our societies. These risks are serious because they limit our ability to tackle the big global challenges we are facing. Changes in our climate and our geopolitical climate, shifts in our demography, and in our technology, spiraling regional conflicts and intensified geopolitical competition and their impacts on supply chains. The sobering reality is that we are once again competing more intensely across countries than we have in several decades. And this makes the theme of this year's Davos meeting even more relevant, rebuilding trust. This is not a time for conflicts or polarization. This is a time to build trust. This is a time to drive global collaboration more than ever before. This requires immediate and structural responses to match the size of the global challenges. 
I believe it can be done. And I believe that Europe can and must take the lead in shaping that global response. The starting point for that is to look deeper at the Global Risk Report to map out a way forward. Many of the solutions lie not only in countries working together, but crucially on businesses and governments, business and democracies working together. It has never been more important for the public and private sector to create new connective tissue, because none of these challenges respects borders. They each require collaboration to manage risks and to forge a path forward. And this is what I want to talk today about. While governments hold many of the levers to deal with the great challenges of our time, business have the innovation, the technology, the talents to deliver the solutions we need to fight threats like climate change or industrial scale disinformation. All right, I don't think that that video requires further commentary. In March of 2023, last year, the European Banking Authority, which is an independent European financial sector agency, called on regulators to assess risks, including social media, that could, quote, contribute to a deterioration in the public perception and reputation of the institution. In response to the ECB's requests, which were specific to certain banks in the region, a major European lender has allegedly formed an entire team that would monitor social media and signal significant volumes of negative posts to the bank's treasury, which will in turn then assess any impact on deposits. What the European Central Bank is asking banks to do is to effectively keep an eye on the general sentiment that people have regarding the banking system and alert the central bank if they notice social media activity casting serious doubts about the stability of the banking industry as well as possible bank failures. I want to take this just one step further and we have to ask this very, very uncomfortable question. Would the recent EU laws about quote disinformation and multiple references made by world leaders in Davos about having to control the narrative even more, where does this ECB social media effort, this request actually fit in? So banks will now have to provide employment to people whose sole duty, whose sole responsibility will be to keep an eye on social media? That seems to be nearly Orwellian, doesn't it? And the question is, perhaps nobody wants to ask, when those types of posts are detected, will the accounts that posted them be banned, blocked, maybe temporarily suspended, or left alone? What is the next logical step here? Well, probably nobody can answer those questions for us. It is clear that there are serious concerns about um, banks' liquidity as depositors are increasingly becoming aware that 2024 may be a year of some major changes, especially with so many countries around the world holding elections this year. And when you add European leaders on a daily basis starting to talk about World War III, it doesn't exactly make anyone comfortable. So it is no wonder that the European Central Bank recognizes now that their depositors may soon start to question if their deposits are actually safe. It didn't help that the head of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, advertised the next phase of European Central Bank digital currency CBDC development that started back in November of last year. The digital euro is clearly adding fuel to the fire too. Banks have always been worried about meeting depositors' cash withdrawal demands. This is nothing new. But typically, banks, being heavily regulated by their governments, by regulators, have to meet certain liquidity requirements that minimize potential risks. 
And as a former bank auditor, I cannot tell you how structured the banking industry is and how much oversight there is from the regulators, which is precisely why it is so, so unusual to see the ECB go as far as to say, hey, let's just watch what they're posting on social media. We need to keep track of those social media accounts that express personal concerns about the stability of the banking sector. The ECB and its regulators are framing these efforts to effectively monitor social media as a way to detect early signs of depositors' growing concerns. But to me, that seems to be odd because as a bank, it's either you manage your liquidity well or you don't. It's very black and white. And if you don't, then it means you're likely keeping significant unrealized losses um, in your investment portfolio, likely in this high interest rate environment that we're in right now, which prevents you from selling those investments at a loss because losses on your income statement will cause a chain reaction. Your shareholders won't be happy. Your shares might decline. Nobody wants that mess. And from a regulator standpoint, Instead of wasting money to pay people who spend all day on social media watching what you and I post, perhaps it would be a good idea for these regulators to look into providing a safety net for those banks that do have liquidity issues or that might have liquidity issues. Maybe they should work out a plan so that people actually feel safe and have no concerns. Perhaps that's where they need to focus their human resources and their payroll expenses instead of paying people to see who's posting what on social media. I will go ahead and end the video here. Leave me a comment below. What are your thoughts on this? And are you personally concerned that there may be bank runs in the near future? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something from it, if you found it helpful. Share it with your network, with your friends and family, and subscribe on Rumble and YouTube. I know many of you don't really use Rumble yet, but it is a great alternative. Check out my video description below and connect with me on various platforms. I will see you in my new one tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now.